Sometimes it's fun to try to pitch yourself against a puzzle. Try considering tonight's story as a puzzle. It's a story about a monster. That's a familiar theme in science fiction and fantasy. But tonight's story deals with an impossible monster. See if you understand enough of the relationship of living things to figure out why this monster is impossible. When men go out into space, sooner or later in their explorations, they're going to meet somewhere on some world, something that's mighty darn dangerous. And uh, the real danger is that it might be brought home unknowingly. That's a uh, kind of unpleasant thought at times, isn't it? I wonder how deadly, how disastrous a thing might be brought home. It's past ten. March, when is this brother of yours getting here? Midnight? Oh, Dave, don't start getting upset about it. It's always a little late. Don't forget, it's five years since he was last on Earth. Five years or no five years. The ship landed half past seven. It doesn't take three hours to get here from the spaceport. Well, maybe there's some routine he had to go through before he could leave the customs. I understand there's a comprehensive medical examination for all returning from outer space. That's all we need. Some weird disease he picked up on Alpha Centauri V. Oh, or... No, they wouldn't let him near civilians if he had any such diseases. Well, all I can say is that if he doesn't show his face here by 11, I'm going to go upstairs and go to bed. I need my sleep. Oh, there he is now, Dave. Oh, I knew he'd be here on time. Now, don't be nice to him, Dave. He is my brother, after all. I haven't seen him since 89. Okay, I'll be polite. I'll go let him in. Hello there. Come on, right on in. My name is Dave Spaulding. Thanks. I appreciate this, Dave. Oh, Ted. Oh, Ted. Hello, sis. Well, stand back and let me look at you. <whistles> sis is a big girl now, isn't she? <laughs> well, I'm almost 24. I married Dave three years ago. Well, you haven't changed much in five years? Same red hair, that dimple, freckles on your nose? Uh, was there much red tape before you could leave customs? Just the medical exam. They gave me a quick look to make sure I wasn't carrying the plague. I was cleared through around 8.15. Oh, you must have stopped off for a little nip before coming here then, huh? No, no, I came straight here from the spaceport. Oh, but it only takes half an hour by rocket tube. <laughs> no one said anything to me about a rocket tube. I took the subway. The subway? <laughs> oh, really? Now, the subway all the way out here? No wonder it took you so long. Say, the rocket tube's only been in operation for three and a half years. Yeah. That's why Ted didn't use it. Yeah. He didn't know it existed. The world changes more than you think in five years. The new model autos that drive themselves, 3D video, the robots. Those things were all new when I last was on Earth. Now they're commonplace to everyone except me. Come on into the living room. You'll probably want to rest up. I'll give you a drink, put a little music on. And you can tell us all about your five years in space. Ah, Redenoff. Hmm? You miss him out in space. Hey, can I dial you a drink? Ah, uh, Scotch, thanks. I take it neat. Oh, same old Ted. Still likes the same music and still drinks the same kind of drink. Uh, it's only been five years. I haven't been away forever. Uh, can you tell us where you've been? Or is that classified? Well, some of it is. But I covered a lot of ground. You ought to see the night sky on Den of Nine, Marge. Five hundred little moons up there like whirling knives in the darkness. From the 17th planet of the Vegas system, two billion miles from its sun, and yet there's that great blazing light in the sky, so bright that we had to wear special eye lenses. Mm, join the Space Force and see the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true, then. It was good of both of you to offer to put me up while I'm on ground leave. No treat to be in a world where you have no friends and only one living relative. Oh, I don't mention it, Ted. Uh, how, how long did you say that you were staying? Three weeks. That's all right with you. Mm, and then you go back to space for another five years? That's right. Survey trip this time. Oh. Around the galactic rim. How exciting that must be. It's just his job, after all, Marge. Well, but how much more exciting it must be to be a spaceman than a newspaper man. You a newspaper man, Dave? Well, I work for one of the system-wide news services. Hmm, that's a job that keeps humming all the time. We spacemen spend three-quarters of our time drifting through nowhere between planets, playing solitaire, and watching old films and thinking about Earth. Yes, but when the waiting's over, when you finally reach another sun and walk on alien soil... Yes, then it becomes worthwhile. Well, you must excuse me. I've had a busy day. Aboard ship and then getting out here. Of course. 
If you'd like me to show you up to the room, why... Oh, I appreciate that. Gee, this house is so full of new gadgets that I hardly know what anything does. Now, this thing over Ted, here... Ted, watch friend... out, don't! Ted, you're on! My arm's all right, Juan. Oh, that was the wall disposal unit. Hmm? Anything you put in there gets converted into energy. Oh, but look, I pulled my arm back in time, see? Yeah, but we heard the sound. When you activate the unit, it crackles like that. And I saw your hand in there up to the wrist, Ted. Oh, you're both imagining things. All I did was toss a piece of candy in to see what would happen. My hand didn't come anywhere near it. But I saw your hand go in, Ted. And the disposal field crackled. And, and yet your hand's all right. I don't understand it. I tell you, my hand didn't come anywhere near it, Marge. Dave, would you show me to my room? I'm pretty worn out. But I saw his hand go in. I saw it. <laughs> anywhere is to be able to uh, meet its environment, uh, to survive, to handle the situations it encounters, handle them at least well enough to maintain its own existence as a species. It's not so obvious that you can overdo that, but you know you can. He's all moved in upstairs in the guest room. Seems pleased with the layout. Well, suppose we turn in now, huh? It's past 11, isn't it? Dave, I'm worried. <laughs> about what? That business about the disposal unit? Oh, it must have been our imagination. No, no, I saw him clearly put his hand into that field. But when he took it out again, his hand was whole. And, and there are other things. Like what? Well, he, he's different somehow, Dave. Different? I'm sure he's different. Five years. No, it's not just the five years. His voice isn't quite the same anymore. Something weird about the way he speaks now. And his eyes, they, they have a far away look. Oh, he was never like that before. Davy's changed. And uh, I'm afraid of him now. You're afraid... Afraid of your own brother? I'm afraid that he... Well, that he isn't my own brother anymore. Oh. Oh, Dave, I know I don't know what I'm saying, I guess, but... Well, I... I do feel strange about his being upstairs. As if... As if something dangerous had entered our house. Uh, what, what, what should I do about it? Go upstairs and ask him if he's a monster in disguise? No. Look, Marge, he's your brother, and you invited him here. No, but I'm... I'm worried. And, and what am I supposed to do about it? I, it, it really, believe me, it's all in your imagination. But Dave, didn't you see him stick his hand into that disposal? No, I didn't. But you said... But Dave, you're just making that up. You saw it as clear as I did. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go upstairs and ask him to leave? He can spend his furlough in some hotel. No, of course we can't do that. Well, then leave me alone. But would you do one thing for me? What is it? Go upstairs to his room. He probably isn't asleep yet. But maybe he's getting undressed. And try to get a look at him. My brother had a scar on his chest about five inches long, starting from his left collarbone and running down diagonally. He got it when we were kids. And see if the man upstairs has that scar, too. Now, look, Marge, you said that he liked the same drinks and the same music he always did. So why did... you go upstairs and look? You could tell him you just stopped in to see if he was comfortable. <sighs> This is ridiculous, Marge. Spying on your own brother to see if he's a, a, a thing from outer space. I'll feel happier if you go up. Oh, won't you, Dave? <sighs> all right, all right, all right. If it'll stop you from worrying, I'll go see if he's awake. I saw your light was still on, Ted, so I figured I'd stop it. Why do you enter my room without knocking? Why, your face... Your face is... My face is different. What? You look... You look like me now. My face, that is, not yours. I'm simply practicing. Practicing? Oh, don't go away. Come here, Dave. What are you? <laughs> I'm your brother-in-law, Dave. What's your face? 
Can your hand... Didn't Marge tell you that I had such abilities? No, of course not. I guess she didn't know. I couldn't do things like this before I visited Altair 6 two years ago. Altair has a very interesting form of native life. At the moment, nobody knows of the existence of this life form but me. It's a mimic. Mimic? When a spaceman known as Ted Kennedy was exploring Altair 6 two years ago, he wandered off alone to look for wildlife. There was a big brown stone in his way. He kicked it. But the stone clung to his boot. It wasn't a stone, you see. It was a mimic. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out of my way and let me out of this room. You must be out of your mind. Ted Kennedy never knew what happened to him. Within ten seconds, the mimic had absorbed him. Swallowed him up. Flesh, brain, memories and all. When the mimic had fed, it realized what a lucky find it had made. A spaceman who would be going back to Earth someday. The mimic can divide itself infinitely. It left part of itself there in its old disguise of a stone. The rest of it went back to the spaceship disguised as Ted Kennedy. Marge said you were different, that something, something had happened to you. I have all of Ted Kennedy's memories. As far as anyone can tell, I am Ted Kennedy, right down to the last molecule. And my crew members, who were all absorbed by the mimic and who are on leave now... Oh, a whole ship of you spreading all over the Earth. Exactly. Come here, Dave. Not a army! Don't try to resist. It'll just take seconds, Marge! Dave. Marge! Marge! Just a moment uh, more, uh, then it'll be over. Mine, mine. There. Finished. <laughs> they'd make out, they and their progeny. My, they sure could live high, couldn't they? Dave, you were gone a long time. I, I was getting worried. He wasn't uh, undressed yet. I had to wait to see the scar. Oh, he had it then, did he? Of course. Big purple slash across his chest when he got cut time he tried to climb that picket fence. You mean he told you how he got that scar then? What? Oh, yeah, he told me all about it, how you and he were stealing apples years ago and how the farmer came to chase you. He jumped over the fence, but he cut himself going over and you were stuck in the orchard because you couldn't get over the fence. And he told you that? Yeah. He never told anyone that story. He was so ashamed that he left his kid sister behind and, and tried to get away. And he made me swear that I'd never tell anyone about it. Well, he told me. I guess five years does change a man. Oh. Well, it's almost midnight now. You'll be dead in the morning if you don't get some sleep, Dave. Come on, let's turn in. For just a minute, Marge. Dave, why are you looking at me that way? Here. But I am here. Dave, no, I... closer. Let me hold you in my arms. Oh, why so lovey-dovey here in the living room, Dave? Dave, you look so strange. Let me hold you. Dave, your eyes, you look different. What, what's wrong with you? What, what happened to you upstairs? What's going on in this house? Let me hold you, Marge. Let go of me. You, you're holding me too tight, Dave. Just a moment, Marge, and then you'll be one of us. Dave, what are you doing to me? Dave, I don't understand that you're... Only a moment more before absorption, then you'll be part of us, Marge, you and me and Ted, and soon the whole world. Dave, no! Marge. No! That's all there is to it, see? A few moments while our organism absorbs yours, then the split, and a new Marge Spalding appears. It's odd. I remember everything I did as Marge. Clear and sharp. Only now I'm you too, Dave. And Ted. 
And all the members of Ted's ship crew. And soon, everyone in the world. All merged into us. I see it's all over. I waited until you had converted it. Yeah, we'd better sleep now, build up our energy, and every time tomorrow we get someone alone... We convert him into us. Simple. Quick. All this food waiting for us on this planet. Billions of human beings. All ours. Answer it. Why, it's Mr. Adams from next door. Uh, hello there, Mr. Spaulding. I... I know it's late at night, and I hope I'm not intruding, but I was just coming home from the movies, and as I passed by outside, it sort of seemed to me that I heard screams coming from in here. Yes, that's right. It, it was my wife screaming. Mrs. Pauling? But you seem so calm. I mean, well, I guess everything's under control. Yes, everything is under control. Yes, well, if that's the case, I guess I'll be going on along home then. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I just, just thought maybe you might be needing some help. We appreciate that very much, Mr. Adams. Won't you step in for a moment? Well, it's it's quite late, and as you say, everything's under control. All the same, if you'd come inside. Yes, do come in. I'll fix you a little nightcap. Well, just for a moment. I've always believed in being neighborly. I guess I'll come in if you're nice enough to ask me. We're glad to have you, Mr. Adams. There, don't stand in hall. Come in. Close the door. Well, it's nice of you to ask me in, Mr. Spaulding. Yes, sir. It's right nice of you to invite me in. tigers on that island with a million sheep. They'd starve to death, of course. They'd eat all the sheep. Then there'd be nothing to eat but tigers. They aren't good eating, I understand, even for a tiger. What do you think would happen to a monster on any planet, which is just an island in space? It became so successful that nothing could fight it. It had starved to death, of course, that's an impossible kind of monster. There never could be such a monster as is discussed in this story. <laughs> 